All right, guys, been one of them days, you know. I started out this morning in the shop. I was uh, trying my, uh, advancing my blacksmithing skills, and I had a lighter blow up and scared the dog shit out of me. Um, so you can, you can see that video. It's not the actual video of it happening, but it's there. Then I came out today, and I'm getting my ice shack ready because we finally got enough ice. We might be able to do some ice fishing this year. So, and then uh, that brings a... Uh, uh, one of them, uh, you can't make this shit up stories. And, uh, you know, back in the day, if I'd have had a cell phone or a camera and we'd have had YouTube and Facebook, shit, I'd be famous by now. But anyways, here's the story. Um, sturgeon spearing. This was back, oh, probably early 90s. Maybe, yeah, probably about, well, maybe late 90s. But anyways, we were going out sturgeon spearing. It was uh, me and my buddy Ron. And, uh, you know, it was, it was cold outside, and we got drunk the night before. Bad drunk. So, you know, the next day, you're just miserable. And we get in an ice shack, and sturgeon spoon, you just kind of stare down a hole for eight hours a day. But anyways, Ron was like, man, I'm getting cold. And I'd be like, man, just tough it out a little bit. You know, it's not that bad. Oh, I'm getting cold. Oh, I'm cold. And then, you know, kind of one thing led to another, and I said, fine. We had just a little two-burner stove in there, and I guess it wasn't enough. So I drug a 100-pound cylinder inside with a Mr. Heater on it. And that's what we usually put in our shacks at night. And it keeps the hole from freezing over. You can really crank the heat to it. So anyways, I took that in there. And I fired it up. And boy, it wasn't long. And you could have cooked macaroni down in the hole. It was that hot. And uh, one of my buddies came in. You know, he's like, gee, you guys got it hot in here. And I said, yeah, Ron's cold. And he started to laugh. He said, oh, he said, it'll probably end of the day. I'll get out of my shack and I'll look down and Christ, your thing will be burned to the ground. Here be two little tar babies uh, sitting on a buckets. So anyways, he left and we're sitting there and Ron kept going, man, I smell gas. And it was back then I was delivering propane gas for l, &L propane. So I probably had, you know, I, I couldn't smell it. And I kept telling him, Ron, it's just coming out of my clothes. It's on my clothes. No, oh, man, I smell gas. And uh, one thing led to another and we kept talking and, and uh, we were kind of joking around, and uh, Ron, we, I don't know, we said something. I remember it was about women. And I remember I said, oh, them effing women, and kaboom! The whole shack blew up. I mean, no shit. Kaboom. Blew up. We went diving out. I remember I dove out the door. Ron's got his arm on my back, and he come out the door behind me, and we hit the ice. And it was one of them years we didn't have no snow, and every time I blinked my eyes, I thought my head was on fire, and I'm beating my head, and we're rolling around on the snow, and shit's all going crazy. My buddy's kid, he went running in his dad's ice shack and said, Yay, yeah, Dad, yeah, Sam's ice shack just blew up. And next thing you know, we got a bunch of people out there, and they're all, holy crap, the water in my hole came up three feet, and, you know, everybody's all crazy. But I looked over at Ron, I'm like, holy shit, buddy, we need to get you to the hospital. And he goes, why? I said, dude, the skin is peeling off your nose. And he goes, well, you ain't looking too good yourself. He said, the skin's peeling off your ears. And I thought, holy shit. So we, uh, a guy gave us a ride and we hauled ass and we were in Oshkosh. So we went to Theta Clark Hospital and we got in there and Ron got a doctor and I got a doctor. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. It was two days in the hospital for Ron. I spent the night in the hospital. Um, and uh, basically what had happened was that 100 pound cylinder had a little leak right up on top there and the gas would go down and it was heavier than the air so it went down it filled up our hole and it started slowly rising up and when it got to that freaking two two burner stove that thing blew and uh, let me tell you it wasn't uh it wasn't very loud inside everybody outside said it was pretty loud you know it was just a woof inside for us and but i'll tell you these little strings here on your sweatshirts everyone's like Whoop burned right up to nothing uh burned uh, uh luckily you know my beautiful mustache didn't get totally burned off because i haven't shaved this since october 31st of 1987 the day i graduated marine corps boot camp so i didn't have to shave that off but you know my eyebrows were gone my hair was all singed up to my hat and and uh the, you know the the uh laces go across your boots and and uh uh, that little metal thing, it burned through the laces and everything. And the doctors, you know, first thing we got there, they're looking up your nose and all your hair. And we're like, man, what the heck? And he's like, oh, you know, the first thing is, usually when there's an explosion, somebody goes, <gasps> and sucks all that hot air in and burns their lungs and everything. And we were lucky enough that we were laughing about women and we were laughing. So we were expelling the hair and it happened that fast. It was that hot. And let me tell you, boys, you can't make that shit up.